<laughs> it was cross maturing. Good morning. <laughs> I just need a little something more than than what I just said earlier. I just like I need a little something extra. I need more. I need more fuel. So I just eat my little bread and butter. Sometimes it's all I need. Just a little bread and butter. Mm. And if I I can handle just like one slice of just regular gluten bread, I can handle one slice. But more than that, it's just kind of like mm, no. Hmm. So how are y'all doing? I'm doing okay. Mm. As you can see, I'm home, which is great for me. Um, you know, uh, I went to go take care of my sister all last week. She was very, very sick. She is a lot better right now. We don't know what she got sick with. <clears throat> she went to the doctor twice, once to an urgent care clinic, once the hospital, two different doctors says, well, you've got some kind of virus. We don't know what it is. And we suspect it was viral meningitis, but we're not sure in order to detect that it would just require a spinal tap. And we're like, no, I don't want to do that. So, um, and then they would, there was, there really wasn't going to be anything they, they could give her to, to help her get through her illness. There's just, she just have to work through it, through that, through that virus, you know? And I'm like, okay, it's pretty bad. I mean, she, she was, she was miserable. I tell you what, it's so hard to see somebody being so miserable, but she got through it eventually. I need to call her up later and see how she's feeling. I think she went back to work today. But she just went like days without eating. And uh, and she was just, yeah, she was, she was in a terrible state. But she's starting to get back to normal yesterday. Um, almost. She was just, she's just really weak. She's just very drained. She just didn't, you know, she lost a lot of nutrition. So just, you know, that's been our, that's going to be our main focus right now is just to help her get her nutrition back. And, you know, so, you know, we'll get through this. Um, you know, it just, it's just, it's just a weirdo thing. Nobody else and nobody else in the house got sick, just her. And it's just like, it's a weirdo virus. I don't know why, but anyway, so while I was there, I tried to do lives. It was not quite working out. <laughs> Tuesday was, you know, Monday was uh, a no-go. Tuesday was eh. Wednesday was kind of eh. Thursday was kind of eh. <laughs> Friday, it wasn't happening. Um, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's just kind of the things. You know, I tried to do it, but I couldn't get earphones to work with that Chromebook and I left mine at home and that's the only way I can get it. And it needs a remote microphone. So, you know, maybe in the future I might grab this camera instead and take it with me because, you know, I'm not sure because I know that this camera has a microphone and I don't have to wear the earbuds or anything like that. So I might take this with me you know, next week. We'll see. I'll take both the earbuds and uh, on this camera and see how it works out with the Chromebook. Which makes it just a little bit easier than say being on my phone. So anyway, mm. now I'm craving soup. <laughs> Like a good pot of soup sounds so good right now. Like some French onion or a vegetable soup. I love me some French onion. There's this one guy I like to follow. He's, um, he, I, I think he's the same channel name on um, 
YouTube as well as TikTok, but he's called Spicy Mustache. So he's like this, you know, Italian um, immigrant to, to Britain. And <clears throat> he has like this zero waste gardening, cooking and gardening. You know, and he does a lot of shorts. It's, that's what he does. He just, he does shorts. He does a few videos, but he does more shorts than anything else. And he just makes everything just look so cool. I mean, like the way he he edits and has his videos are just really, really cool. And the, he recently did one where he was making like zero waste um, French onion soup. I was just like, oh, man, it looks so good, you know. And um, <clears throat> what I like about it, though, he made it without. Um, <clears throat> I think he made it without. um uh, any kind of animal um, broth or anything like that. So no, no beef broth, no chicken broth. I think he just used a vegetable broth that he had made and uh, it looked really good. And then he took the skins and he, and he, he roasted the skins and then he ground them up for seasoning. And I was just like, I didn't know you could do that. You know, I'm learning so much about, you know, these kinds of things. It's like, you know, I, I really like the idea of the zero waste <clears throat> So that's why I kind of, you know, I really kind of like this, uh, this idea and this mentality. And I'm starting to shift, you know, a lot of different things in, in my consideration. I'm trying to get away from, from using plastic as, as much um, because I'm really finding that plastic is starting to become a hormone disruptor. And as, as I'm getting older, you know, I'm more concerned about that because, you know, my hormones are like going this number right here. I can't lose weight. Um, no matter like what I do, I mean, like I haven't really tried to be honest, but like there are things that I've done and, you know, it's just like, I wasn't losing the weight. And I think it's because my hormones are out of whack. You know, it's the only thing I, I can think of, you know, it, it's, it's very discouraging when you're trying to lose weight and you're, it's not coming off. It's, you're, it's not working for you. It's like now how much you walk, it's, it's not how much you diet. It's just like, it's just not working, you know? And so I'm trying to figure out like, okay, well, what's, what's the issue, you know? So I'm like, as I'm getting older, my hormones are, you know, my estrogen levels are going down, you know, cause you know, I'm not, my body's, you know, saying, you know, you're, you're not going to produce children anymore. So you don't need this much estrogen. So it's just, it's, it's a natural thing to go through. But the thing is, it's like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not healthy for me to, to be this weight and, you know, to, to, to be this big and everything. I, I, I just need to, to really, you know, work out. I got to get some of this weight off of me for health reasons. You know, um, I, I, I want to have a better quality of life. And so I just need to really, you know, work on that and shift. So I'm trying to get to the point where I'm going to start using up all the things that I have. I'm not going to th throw away like all my plastics and things like that. I'm just going to repurpose them, reuse them in, in different ways. That way they're not being used in my food or, you know, where I'm not going to consume, you know, that, you know, um, or even other hormone disruptors. And there's a lot that are in like, you know, cosmetics, like, you know, your body lotions, deodorant, you know, things that you put on your skin, you know. So anything that you put on your physical self, into yourself, on yourself, there are some hormone disruptors out there. Plastic happens to be one of them. And, um, you know, so I'm just kind of doing that. I'm starting to do that shift, that, that mental shift, you know. And I kind of want to do that with my yarn too. You know, I wanted to, to change from using my acrylics and my polyesters and shift that to more natural fibers, you know, but I really want to, cause I've already invested a lot of money. I've got a ton of it, you know, and I, I don't, I don't want to throw it away. I don't want to give it away cause I invested in it. This, this is, this was, you know, in mind when I purchased all this stuff, this was an investment for myself. But now that I'm shifting into that other focus, you know, I really want to try to gain more all natural fibers in, in 
you know, kind of be more in the all natural fibers kind of mentality. You know, I want to explore, you know, more in that area. Just right now, it's, you know, I just need to work with what I have. So therefore, you know, I'm doing that uh, stash down 2023. And so I've been doing a lot of stitching lately, like a lot. I mean, it's it's a lot of little projects, just a few here and there, you know. Um, but I went through three skeins of um, Lion Brand Homespun, and I'm on my last skein of this one particular colorway. I'm not sure if I have any more of this colorway. I know I have more Homespun, but the thing is, is what I've been doing with it it's helped me figure out like, you know, um, different pattern designs. And these patterns that I'm kind of coming up with are just real simple. They're not super elaborate, but, you know, I know that they're, you know, somewhat trendy and, you know, things like that. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope you're doing well today. Um, so, you know, um, so I've been doing some stuff. So I've got like, <clears throat> let me show you. This is, this is my last little bit of this colorway that I've been working with. You know, I'm trying to make an ear warmer and it's just super simple. And I had the toughest time trying to figure out what hook to use with this homespun. And the the hook that I, I picked was a, it's a it's a 5.5 millimeter clover amore and it seems to work really really well with the homespun because I've got you know a variety of hooks this one seemed to work the best for for this type of yarn and honestly I keep falling back onto these clover amores I want to get larger ones for sure in time you know I. I think what I need to do is I need to make an Amazon wish list and share that. But you know, honestly, I need to share that with my with my friends and my family too because I've got a birthday coming up. Half of them don't even know what to get me, and it's fine. You know, I don't. It's not really. I want presents. I don't really want presents. You know, but sometimes people feel awkward, like, I, I want to get you something, and I'm like, well, you know. And at the time, sometimes I'm just like, I don't know what I want. You know, I could always, I always need something. And, and, you know, I think this is something that I, I could, you know, need or want, you know, is, is more of these Clover Amore hooks um, that I want a larger gauge on those. <clears throat> I think they work really well. But, you know, I hear tulips are good too. Um, so... Yeah, I definitely would like to try those out because I see those. Um, it's like one of my uh, video channel, or one of the channels I like to watch. I'm not sure where, <clears throat> pardon me, and I think they're the same person, but there's two, three channels that do the same kind of things. They just do, they just do tutorials, and the style of the tutorials and the style of things that they're making, but they have two different channel names, and I think. It's they're the same people. And they both use tulip hooks. So anyway. They look like they're really cool. Um, really cool hooks. I've heard other people say they really like their tulips. But this is what I've been mainly just doing with the, um, I know you really can't tell, you know, and really see the detail on it because it's just the way that this variegated yarn is, but it's just front post, back post, um, half double crochet. That's all I've been doing. Oh, I mean, I'm not front post, back post. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. 
It's just back post double crochet causing a ribbing effect. And then I've been adding like buttons and, and things like that. Hi, Mona. Good morning. How are you doing? But the buttons I love to use for this, and I'll show you guys. I love these buttons. I get them from Hobby Lobby, and I've purchased them several times. But they're Yarnology, I'm sorry, Sewology buttons. Um, but they're wooden ones, and it's $3.29. So you get about, I think you get, in these bigger ones, these are... Um, I don't know how many millimeters these are. It's not really telling me how many millimeters they are. But they're hand wash only, which is fine. But let me show you these buttons. I love these. These are great buttons. And they come in this nice dark chocolate brown. And they're all, they're just wooden buttons. And then they have a lighter tan. Uh, color just just these are just really nice buttons and I, I use them I've been using these these for years I get them from Hobby Lobby they're really good um, I like to buy them whenever they have like they're sewing on sale which is usually the opposite time from when the yarn goes on sale so if I'm not getting there getting yarn that's on sale for 30 percent off I can pick up these buttons for 30% off. It's actually pretty reasonable, you know. Um, these are usually, uh, what does it say, 329? Yeah, these are just 329 for a pack, but you know, I can get 30% off. It's not a half bad deal. But I love going to Hobby Lobby. I haven't been there in quite a while. And I love checking out their clearance, you know. Yeah, they are nice, thank you. <clears throat> I like coconut shell buttons, wood or vintage. I have looked into the coconut shell buttons. Um, yeah, I, I'm really interested in those because I'm looking for more all natural sourced things, you know, trying to, you know, trying to make more all natural things going on. I did make a neck where I actually have made like three neck warmers out of this homespun. And I'm going to do that in a separate video because of the stash down for 2023. So I don't want to show too much because I want to have some content um, for that. But, you know, this, I know you can kind of see the ribbing on that. If I turn it this way. Yeah. See, it's kind of like a ribbing. So I'm trying to get my light just right. There we go. You can see where it's kind of ribbed. So I'm just thinking like, okay, it's just going to be like an ear warmer. You know, I think it's wide enough to cover the ears for most people. I have small ears. <clears throat> you know, I like every time I go to the ears, nose, and throat doctor, they're always like, you have a small nose. You have small ears. And I'm like, yeah, well, everything else on me is small. <laughs> we have a small brain too. Who knows? <clears throat> Hi, Judy. Thanks for coming in. <clears throat> oh, also, if you guys, if you want to, if you type in the word drop, Nightbot will drop your link if you have a channel and you're a content creator. <clears throat> I forget about that. And I need to, like, get my Nightbot set up a little bit more with more commands. And I forget. I've had a, I've had a, uh, interesting last week <laughs> i've i've been on call like all week because my sister was sick <clears throat> mona did what i'm gonna see i think i am subscribed to you i'm gonna double check here real quick yeah i am subscribed i know that i was i'm just making sure just making sure <clears throat> But anyway, <clears throat> and then I'm going to take this last button that I have and then put it on this ear warmer. But I'm going to, because I don't have that much yarn left, okay, 
I even had to frog this because I made it too wide. So I went down, I went back a couple stitches. I made it like 15 stitches wide originally, and I announced down to 13 stitches wide. But I'm going to make it like kind of taper at the end a little bit, you know, just kind of do some, you know, uh, half double crochet together to give it a little bit of a taper and a little bit of a point at the end. I'm going to see, it's, it's kind of like, I'm going to try, try to play yarn chicken with this, you know, <laughs> but for that stash down, I'm going to have to weigh all my stuff that I've made. And I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm looking over here to the left, which is where my card is at. And it's kind of filled to the top, but I've got one, two, Oh, I don't have <clears throat> one, two, three. I'm going to, I made, I made a couple of pairs of fingerless gloves. So I'm going to count those together as one um, for each pair. So four, five, six, seven. I made quite a bit. I think I made about seven or eight, per, eight seven or eight things last month. Just in the, you know, just to finish it up in February. I didn't really do that much in in uh, January. I really didn't finish anything in January. I don't think so. If my memory is correct, I don't think I finished anything in January. Everything I finished was in February. So I'm just going to um, really uh, try to incorporate all that. And, you know, surprisingly, though, um, the majority of it was, was with really chunky yarn, but I'm trying to, I want, I want, I want to do is I want to work out everything that's in the living room first. I've got a cart here. I need to work out what's on the cart, finish out what's in the cart, and then go move on to the rest of the living room because my craft room is a whole nother business. <laughs> it's, just, it's a whole nother business. And it's like spilling out of my craft room into the living room. Of course, you know, what happens is, is I get the idea for a project and I take it out of the craft room and it stays in the living room. So it's just like, you know, I just need to not get things out of the craft room as much. So I just got to, you know, make sure that, you know, I got to stash it down, stash it down in the living room. And I'm just kind of making whatever at this point. Um, you know, I'm just trying to make like whatever I can make with these items. And sometimes it's just like, I don't know what I'm going to make. I'm just going to make something. And sometimes it's just simple stuff. But sometimes when you work on the simple stuff, it gives you ideas for the more complex stuff, the more involved stuff. And and sometimes that's it's just kind of part of the process. And sometimes when you work on something and you're just like, I'm just not feeling it. You know, I'm just like, I'm not feeling this, this, this yarn. I'm just not feeling this project that I'm making with it. You know, um, I've done that quite a, a bit recently. I'm just like, I'm thinking I'm going to make something with this pro this yarn. And I'm just like, it's just not working out. It's just, it's just not, it's just not coming together. It's not working out right. So, you know, it, and the thing is, it's like, you want it to work out. In your mind, it's like, yeah, it's coming together. And then you're like, wait, this, this stitch variation is not working out. Or this hook's not working out. Or this yarn's not working out. So you want to start other things. Or I do, at least. I want to start other things. But the thing is, it's like, you know, I'm really bad at, you know, doing whip-itis. I'll start a whip and I won't finish a whip. But I really do want to start making things and then maybe create my own pattern for it. Write out some of the patterns, these simple patterns I probably would use as freebies for tutorials, etc. cetera. Um, but I would also like, you know, and also just to get familiar with pattern writing. Um, you know, I've been following patterns for years and I, I kind of have a general understanding of how to write a pattern or how it's worded and et cetera. But I, it would be nice to have somebody do it to be a tech editor, but I can't afford a tech editor. So I'm just going to have to just wing it and just maybe get people to do some pattern testing for me. Mm. I 
I took it off mine. It kept saying people weren't subbed when they were. Huh. Oh, thank you, Judy. I used to write crochet pattern. Oh, cool. I used a few pattern testers. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, I need to, to get more into it. I got a cool thing in the mail. So, okay, I do have registered business. Um, <clears throat> and so sometimes some other companies will send you like little freebies and samples. But um, I'm going to block out my phone number. Somebody calls me. But one of my, I have two registered companies. One is um, Hill Tree Cottage creations, which is my adult all natural fibers line. And then I've got punky chunky creations, which is my baby line. And with my baby line, I'm actually, I'm using acrylics and polyesters because a, they're cheaper, they hold up better, but eventually I do want to get away from that and go for a premium baby product because I figured like, even with the premium yarn, it's going to hold up better than say, you know, a cheap yarn, it will hold its shape better, especially if it's a well-made yarn, you know, but the thing is, is like, you know, I feel like I can charge things higher price because it would be like an heirloom item. So I had to, I have to switch my thinking for that. You know, I had to think like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm making an heirloom item. These are things that, you know, people can pass on from child to child to generation to generation. And I think that's not a, a bad thing to do. So, you know, and I think that's what, because babies grow so darn fast. You know, I have this, this trunk right here. Ah, right there. Okay. Yeah. So you remember my fingers pointing. Okay. This trunk is like a family heirloom trunk, but not my family. Okay. It actually belongs to my sister and her grandmother. My sister and I have... Two, two different fathers, okay? And, um, well, that sister does. My other sister, well, we had the same daddy. Anyway, um, with the one that just got, you know, from being sick. And her her father just passed away last year. Um, no, the year before last. He's been gone over a year now. Okay, anyway. Um, so she inherited this, but she has no like sentimental attachment to it. It belonged to her family, like her grandmother. And the thing is, is like when we open it up though, there are some baby clothes, but we don't know whose they are. You know, we see some other little items some little, and we just don't know who they are. And honestly, we have no, we don't have a strong love for this family. It's kind of a messed up family, I, which is unfortunate. You know, because I feel weird and I feel odd about keeping another family's heirloom object. But she just has no love for this family. And I can't blame her because they have, they're just not very nice people. So, I mean, it's a beautiful chest, you know. And I'm, I'm going to hold on to it until she feels like she wants it. But right now she doesn't want it. She just, you know, it's just a little bit of a, a sore subject. So I'm just going to, you know, put away some of the stuff that's inside. Maybe one day we'll do some digging in her family when things aren't so, you know, crazy, you know, emotional, you know, thing. And uh, I'll just put it aside, preserve it. You know, I need to figure out how to preserve all this stuff and, and save it for her for later. If she wants to keep, I mean, she's like, she's like, she looks at it and she's like, I don't know who, I don't know who this belongs to. There's no records for it whatsoever. But the thing is, is that there is an heirloom, there's heirloom things in it, you know? And also my, my, um, I have an aunt. She's not married to the same gentleman before, but all her, you know, two of her daughters, her two eldest daughters, um, their their grandmother or his her mother-in-law um she made them a knitted baby dress and a blanket and like a pillow and all that jazz 
she has her daughter's uh, pictures, take, you know, baby pictures taken in the same dress. And I'm just like, you know, that kind of resonated with me, you know. This is before I even was thinking about crocheting, but she did just like back in the, you know, back in the 80s, you know, back when these kids were born. And she had these pictures taken of these babies, you know, with, you know, in these dresses and stuff. And I was just sitting there going, oh, my gosh, that's sweet. That's something I want to do. I want to make an heirloom thing that a baby can have their picture taken in. Or, you know, so you can pass on from one child to the next, you know, and, and, and I want it to be a quality item, but, you know, it just, you know, like I said, I have to shift, I have to do that shifting. <laughs> I'm shifting all the time. I'm a shifty person. When I got out I switched to sign. Oh, okay. That might work out. Do you do sewing tutorials? Okay, cool. Online, I mostly sold baby hats for 18 to, to 27 each. That was years ago. I'm sure they're now more expensive. Yeah, I mean, okay. Thanks, Mona. Yeah, I would imagine so. But anyway, um, I did want to show off that they, I got this pen with my company's name on it. And I was like, golly, I feel official now. <laughs> he says punky chunky creations. And I was like, yeah. Cause that's what I used to call my baby girl. She was my punky chunky, my punky chunky. Anyway. But that's kind of like the thing I want to kind of shift to. And then also, um, I have like a, on my mother's side, um, we have a pair of baby booties. And I'm looking at, and they're crocheted. I'm looking at these baby booties. And I think... I want to say my grandfather's sister made this. So it's like a great aunt or a great, great aunt made these for my mother. And I'm looking at it and they're definitely made with nylon yarn. And I'm looking at it and they're in just tiny little stitches and things like that. I'm just like, man, I just get to that point, but it's definitely nylon, nylon yarn. And my mother wore them, all her siblings wore them, and I even wore them um, coming home from the hospital. So when mom passes on, um, I'm going to get those. And then if my kid ever has a baby, which I seriously doubt, um, I will use those to, you know, put on, you know, um, my grandchild's feet. If not, I will put it on my nieces and nephews' feet, my great nieces and nephews' feet when they come home from the hospital because I want to continue that tradition, you know. I did not know that about this until I was much older. We didn't do that for, for my child. And I, I didn't know about it until much later. And I think what it is is that, since my child was born, my, my grandmother had them in her possession. And when she passed on, mom got them. And so it's like now I think from now on, I think for sure I really want to pass on that tradition of using these baby booties for the children coming home from the hospital. And they're just tiny little yellow ones, you know, and it's yellow, you know, so it can be used for either both male or female. But it's the point, so tr tr traditions, you know, carrying on sweet memories and, and things like that. And, and I just love that story, you know, and these, these are things that are attached to, you know, uh, memories. And, um, you know, it just, just kind of feels cool. Um, I really love the idea of it. 
Um, I know that everything nowadays is online, you know, um, people are constantly, you know, taking pictures and, you know, uh, but it's just, it's so different when you're actually doing these traditions and acting them out, living them, living these traditions. Cause you can, you can look at people all online and like, Oh, that's, that's cool. You know, you can show off people and try to get context and views and likes, but actually do in doing these actions with your family, it just feels good. You know, it's just like, yes, there's, there's a sense of pride, you know, you're like, I'm, I'm continuing this tradition. This is, this is something that's just us. This is just ours. You know, and I think it's a really cool idea. <clears throat> I think that's a good idea. I usually go to the easy uh, carry arms for babies or young children. Never say never. I'm expecting my eighth grandchild. <laughs> well, <laughs> we have a unique situation. <laughs> but you know, you're right. Never say never. You know, um, Though it's like, you know, yeah, I, I, I just don't know with this, with this, with my kid, you know, but I, I even told my sister and my brother-in-law, I said, look, the way my kid is going, I'm likely not going to have grandkids, you know, right now I have a grand, you know, lizard and a grand spider. Okay. This is what we got. I mean, you know, she, she just loves creepy crawly things like that, you know. She's like getting ready to come to town so she can go to a reptile convention. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, don't be wrong. I, I like lizards fine. Spiders don't scare me. I just don't do the snakes. Oh, I'll never come visit if she gets a snake. Forget about it. <clears throat> and it's so funny because I can go to the zoo. I can look at them behind glass. I can go to the pet store and look at them behind glass. But if they're out in the wild and we're sharing the same airspace, mm -mm. no, 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 no. We ain't doing no snake. Uh -uh. I don't care if it's got no teeth. I ain't doing no snake. Forget about it. No. Worms don't scare me. Snakes. It's just snakes. And it's it's a phobia. It's a irrational fear. And and I didn't used to, I didn't used to be scared of snakes when I was a little kid. I certainly am now. It's just, ooh, I can't even watch them on TV sometimes. It just mm, creeps me out so bad. And I'll have nightmares. No, 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 no. I just don't do that, you know. <clears throat> but anyway. Yeah, so, like, if my nephews have, you know, babies, <laughs> which could be within the next 10 years, you know, it could be because they're like 11 and almost 10. So it's like, I mean, 10 years, they'll be like 20, 21, you know? And I'm like, it could happen, you know? Let's hope that it doesn't happen then, but it could happen. You know, they could get married young. It's not out of the realm, realm of possibilities. You know, of course, I would love them to go to college first and then, then get married. But in all honesty, I mean... You know, that would be, I mean, you know, but the thing is, is like, you know, I would, I, I just so want to be part of their lives, you know, especially when they have children, you know, I don't know if their wives would be okay with that <laughs> because that would be the meddling auntie. <laughs> yeah. And, um, on Saturday, um, we went to go pick out a musical instrument for one of my nephews. He's going into middle school. And um, I was able to be privy or to be part of that process. And it just made me like so happy that I was there to, to help encourage him, to help him, you know, see what kind of instrument that he chose, you know, and whether he sticks with it or not, that's ultimately his choice. But I was just kind of finding it interesting and I thought it was really, really fun, you know, it's like, cause, um, you know, his mom 
was like, oh, I want him to have this particular type of in instrument. And I was like, no, he needs to pick out what, what suits him, you know? And it was, it's, it's kind of funny because like, you know, you think your kid's going to pick this one particular type of in instrument and, you, and, and it might be something that you actually like, but they pick something else. They're just like, yeah, that's the instrument for that child. You know, that's, that's the one, you know, and, and it's interesting, you know, uh, to see them in their decision-making process, you know, but what attracts them, you know, cause everybody is unique, you know, um, I'm not musically inclined. It's just not my, my gift. It's just not my forte, but, um, you know, I appreciate music greatly. I think it's important. I think music is very, very influential in, you know, human development. Um, you know, I mean, like music is, you know, you know, I'll be, any of y'all seen me talk about music before in my past, uh, the music is so important because, you know, ancient man was creating music just as just about the same time when they were, you know, start doing cave paintings and, and things like that, you know? So it's just like, you know, art, music, expressionism is part of our baser, uh, being, you know, as human beings, I think this is kind of what changes us from animals into it, into a sense. It's one of the quintessential things that changes us, you know, being from, from, you know, from humans to animals, you know, we have the ability to control our environments. We have the ability to manipulate it to our needs, et cetera, et cetera. You know, um, you know, music, art, we can create, we take something from nothing and, and, and create it and, and just, it can be just this wonderful thing. So, I mean, it just, it is interesting, you know, and I, I just, the whole thing is just fascinating to me. I, I just get really fascinated with it. I, I like taking the yarn, you know, originally was nothing <laughs> and I make, I'm making something with it, you know, and I just like, yes, this is, this is part of, I think this is part of my human experience. <clears throat> the snake thing, there's one thing <laughs> that can make me hurt myself trying to get away. I know. <laughs> one time my sister and I went for a walk, um, at a, at a park and it was just after it rained and there's like this runoff Creek in this one area we saw this like i mean the sink had to have been about like almost about five feet i mean it's just as long as i am tall you know and we're on the path but like off to the side of the path you know we're probably talking about maybe i don't know 10 20 yards you know away from the path and and uh and there's, there's, there was this, I guess it was a water moccasin. I don't know. Cotton mouth water moccasin. I think they're the same damn thing, but it's slithering away, you know, slithering along the banks of the, of the, you know, the runoff Creek and I, you know, and it's moving pretty fast. And my sister's like, wow, look at that snake. I was just like, nope, we're going to keep on walking. <laughs> I'm not going to get close to that sucker. And she's like, Jamie, wait. And I'm like, no. We're just gonna keep on walking. No, this is not happening. <laughs> I'm not gonna get close. You can forget about it, sister. <laughs> I am just not doing it. Mm -mm. Nope. Uh, do not do that, especially if they're really big. But the thing is, like, you know, I love camping. And we always go camping on water. So, you know, um, I just have to learn to accept that. <laughs> that they're there. I don't see them. It's okay. <laughs> I don't see them there. It's fine. I know that they're there. You know, there's probably one every few feet, you know, but I don't see them. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. They don't exist if I don't see them. <laughs> Uh. 
Hmm. I mean, like even the idea, I don't know. I'm not sure about the idea of sharks though. Or piranhas. <laughs> I don't think I would be keen about the idea of swimming with piranhas. <laughs> so if I ever go to the Amazon, <laughs> which is not anytime soon, probably not ever in my life, <laughs> I really have no desire <laughs> to go down to the Amazon. Uh, but I hear it's beautiful. <laughs> but I don't think I'm ever going to go wading in the water <laughs> because I'm like, <laughs> there's piranhas in there. <laughs> I'm a juicy tidbit. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think I want to go swimming with piranhas, but I've watched a lot of shows about like, you know, piranhas and things like it's fascinating. It's fascinating to watch these shows about these dangerous animals that, you know, they got, they got a lot of hype to them, but you know, I mean, there's like, you know, communities that live on water and things like that down there in the Amazon. They eat off the piranha, you know, but they, 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 it's how they live their lives, you know, and it's like, you know, there's always that story about the baby falling into the water and the piranhas get it, you know, like I can't find the baby. Oh, <laughs> should have watched your kid, <laughs> you know, fell off into the water, but you know, the thing is, is that, you know, even though rationally, I know snakes are more afraid of me than I am of them. And, and the same thing goes for piranhas. Piranhas aren't really looking for you particularly to eat. Um, they're just, you know, they, they have, they, they follow a certain type of, if something's like, you know, splashing about, in the water, but if it's like calmly moving, they're not going to go after you. That's from what I understand. Idea about sharks too. It's like, you know, I don't think most sharks are out to eat you. <laughs> not all of them are jaws, you know, um, and not all sharks are big, you know, some of them are small, but there are some like the bull sharks and things like that. They will attack you. And, and there's some other sharks too that, but some of them are like, can like go from the seawater to the freshwater. So, and I think this is a real issue with over in, in, in Florida of all places. Uh, these, these sharks coming up into the channels, you know, inland where, you know, or the, the rivers and stuff. And you'll have problems with sharks being in the rivers and stuff like that. And, you know, people are just afraid of them. They're fascinating creatures um, for sure. But, uh, but it's just something that, you know, I'm not sure if I'm interested in going swimming, you know, but I, in, in, I don't know, maybe, maybe not so much. I mean, maybe I'm just kind of like, I mean, I've done swimming in the, in the ocean before. I don't, I'm really not that afraid of them, to be honest. I don't think so. Um, but then, like, my sister and I were watching a show recently um, while she was sick. And, you know, so we were just kind of flipping around. And we saw this one show about alligators. Now, those suckers scare me. <laughs> I, I think I'm afraid of an alligator more so than a shark. You know, the idea of e swimming in a place where their alligators are at, I'm like, yeah, no, they're aggressive. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Hmm. So anyway, oh, but I mean, like the idea of an alligator is not like there. It's very intimidating. Um. But yeah, I don't think I want to be in the same space with them. They're just too powerful of a creature. You know, and they're ancient. Man, alligators, between alligators and turtles, they're just ancient, ancient creatures. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Um, so, but I would love to crochet an alligator. I think that would be cute. And there's like this one chick that I was watching on YouTube shorts, and I don't see her anymore. Um, and I guess my algorithm kind of kicked her out. 
but she was, uh, she works in like in this zoo and she like takes care of the gators or crocodiles or whatever they are. I think they're crocodiles anyway. She takes care of them and she feeds them and she like pets on them and talks to them. And I'm just like, I'm fascinated by it. I'm just like, what? This is, this is wild, but it's kind of crazy, you know? Um, you know, I am kind of fascinated with the capacity of animals, you know? Um, I think animals are a little bit more intelligent than we give them credit for, even like fish. I think fish are really smart in, in their own capacity. Um, <clears throat> I've just, it's just, you know, I just really do think so. Some people think, you know, fish are dumber than a post. That's why we eat them. You know, some people are okay with that, but I'm just like, I do think, I think they have intelligence to a point, you know, I, mean, I do feel that animals have souls. You know, and, uh, you know, that might be simple souls, but I do think they do have souls. And, um, I don't think, you know, it, but I, I think it is okay, um, you know, to have dominion over them animals. I mean, I think that's what God ordained us to do, to have dominion over them. And some people are more sensitive about it than others. Some people are like, no, I don't want to eat an animal because, you know, it's a spirit, it's a soul, you know, I don't have a right to eat it. But I'm just like, well, I understand that. I get it. But I don't mind the idea of, of eating an animal if necessary. And also, I used to have this philosophy. It was like, look, if I can't go out and kill it myself, I have no right to eat it. And honestly, if, if push comes to shove, I could be a hunter if necessary. I wouldn't like it in the beginning. But I think I could do it. I think I have that capacity in me. If necessary. If it became a life and death situation, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll eat a fish. I'll eat Mr. Squirrel. Or Mr. Rabbit. If necessary. If it's life and death, I'm sorry, Moo Cow on out in the field is going to have to get it. <laughs> I think I could do it. Honestly. You know, but I think it's important to, to know, to know how to do those things, you know, and, you know, uh, I wish I had learned young, you know, when I was younger, how to, to do hunting and things like that, but I never really did. I never really fished. Not really. I mean, I've done gun fishing a couple of times, but not really. But, um, I think it's important. I think there's are skills that I think people need to learn how to do personally. Um, I know that's not for everybody, but I think we need, I think we need, need to learn how to do basic survival skills. I think really an important thing. I think we need to learn how to at least build a fire. I think we need to learn how to, you know, cook, boil water, you know, take, take something from nothing and, and do something with it. You know, I think we need to learn how to do basic skills. I think it's very important. Survival skills are very important. You know, and I always keep telling myself, you know, when I'm learning something new, it's like, you know, how can I utilize this, um, you know, in everyday life? Or could I ever use this skill in a situation or, you know, stuff like that? Because you never know. You never know. Anything could happen. You know, um, you could be marooned somewhere. You know, so you need to learn how to do basic things, you know, like how to build a fire, you know, um, you know, how to treat a wound, you know, basic, um, you know, basic uh, first aid. You, these are just things you just need to learn how to do. And I think it's really important. And I don't think we put enough emphasis on those kinds of things um, enough. Um you know, with home ec, you know, in school, they teach you how to, you know, 
cook and do things around the house and things like that. If your parents are not, you know, savvy enough to, to teach you. Um, but, um, you know, just basic survival skills are just as important as learning how to keep, you know, maintain your home, in my opinion. Um, at least, you know, learn your, you know, cardinal directions, you know, how to, you know, follow a compass if you have one, if not, how to figure out where you're going and where, you know, et cetera. Um, you know, so I think those kinds of things are really kind of important. I think we need to learn how to do those things. Um, you know, a long time ago when they used to teach, you know, especially girls in school, we're talking about like a few hundred years ago, their basic education was learning how to knit, um, how to cook, do things around the house, you know, those kinds of things. That's, that was a basic education for girls, you know, was how to, to maintain their houses and stuff like that and how to do math and reading, you know, math and reading. And then, you know, the home arts is what I kind of call them, you know, how to, how to knit. Um, you know, how to sew, embroidery, those kinds of things. And those are just basic things. And, you know, I think, yes, now those things are kind of antiquated, but I think it's still important to know how to do those things. Um, you know, I do agree with we should learn how to do, you know, complicated math and sciences. We need those things. You know, we need those things to to help humankind to progress, but we do need some of those basic building blocks, you know, for for people. And uh, you know, so I'm totally, in, you know, all for you know, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, um, the 4-H, you know, things like that. There's more to it than you know, uh, those kinds of things. Hi, Sunita. Thanks for coming by. I'm actually getting ready to go in about like two and a half minutes. But I, um, I watched a couple of your videos. I watched your, um, your 100 day, uh, challenge video. So let me ask you a quick, quick question on that. Um, is that just only, um, crochet squares for that challenge. Cause I was, I wasn't, I haven't been able to find the actual video for that. And I'm not sure, uh, about that. So I was, and I, I saw something from Linda Simpson too about that. And I'm like, is it just only, is it only, uh, crochet granny squares that you do that with? It's like, you have to make like a hundred crochet granny squares. I don't know the, the parameters of this, of this challenge. It looks interesting to me, but honestly, if it's, if it's crochet game squares, <laughs> it's not in my repertoire. <laughs> no, it is whatever you want as long as you craft. Oh, okay. Okay. That's great. I can do that. <laughs> is there like, I know that it's like, I know a lot of people had started it and I was just like, okay. Oh, you're doing two rows a day. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so I'm like, I'm like interested in that. Okay, so what it was there like a time frame when it started, or you can just start it at any moment? Because I don't know the parameters of this of this challenge. I'm interested in it. For just a hundred days. You can kind of start at any time, I guess. Oh, 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 I see. I see. Oh, okay. No, I missed it. Darn it. Maybe we can do it again sometime. 
I didn't know when it was supposed to start. I haven't heard of it until I saw your video of it. And I was like, what is this? I don't know what this is. What is this thing? What is she doing? And then I saw Linda Simpson do it. And I was like, okay, Linda Simpson's doing this too. What is she doing? What is this? Well, whatever, Wednesday was you can start whenever just use the oh okay oh so okay i see all right so i can start this at any moment and i can just you know do that hashtag okay i can do this i can do this gotcha okay i can do that i can crochet every day but i really kind of want to break out my cricket machine and play with that thing i haven't done that yet you were on day six okay i might do that the beginning of march uh march 1st i might try to do that march 1st and see how that goes okay cool yeah i want to try that that looks like that would be a lot of fun. So I'll be like doing two challenges at the same time, you know, working through my stash and then um, the 100 day challenge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Hold on, wait, I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I have too many stitches. I'm not going to redo this. <clears throat> anyway, all right. Yeah, I'm hanging over a little bit too much. But thank you for helping me out with that information. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so I'll be on tomorrow. Um, I usually take off Wednesday, but because I might be taking off on Friday... I don't know yet. I might be I might be coming on Wednesday, but I won't do my normal time on Wednesday. I might be in the afternoon. And then <clears throat> I will um, hopefully so tomorrow's today's the 27th, tomorrow's 28th, Wednesday's the 1st. So I think I'm I'm, I'm going to try to film my stash down video on March 1st and then, um, and I will start the 100 crochet chain challenge or one, not chain challenge. <laughs> my, uh, 100 crafting challenge. Did you call that the 100 day project? Okay. The 100 day project. That's what it is. Um, <clears throat> I'll try that. I'm going to try it. I need, I need to find the, the video that associates to that. I, I, I looked a little bit, but I wasn't sure. And I saw a lot of different people, like different types of crafters doing it. And I was just like, Hmm, you know, how does this pertain to the crochet? So I was kind of thinking like, okay, Hmm. How am I going to do that? Anyway, um, so I'm thinking about, uh, okay, so I'm going to try to, I'll start that on Wednesday. I need to get back on looking at the hashtag crochet, crochet chain challenge, the one minute chain challenge. Um, I need to update that because I haven't watched in about a week or so. I've just been busy with my sick sister. So I was it kind of kept me busy and I really haven't been looking at my phone too much and things like that. So I need to get back on that. I need to update my playlist. I know a lot of other people have done it. Um, I need to watch their videos. I would love to, I love watching their videos because I like seeing how people are going about doing it. It's really fun. And then, um, so I'm not sure about Friday's live. I might still do it. Um, but I would be doing it for my sister's house because I got to go back for spring break. 
I gotta watch the kids. Spring break starts the next following week. Um, which is early this year. Usually it's in the second week of March, but it's actually starting the first week of March, which is interesting. And um, though, which is kind of cool because the next following week I've got a few appointments I got to go to or appointment. And then um, that would also be my nephew's birthday and I need to make him a cake. I think I know when I'm going to make him an Oreo cake. He's been crazy about Oreos lately. And I'm like, no, I'm going to make this kid a cookies and cream Oreo cake. I need to make one. And then my boyfriend also wants one too. He was like, expressing like he wants an Oreo cake too. And I was like, okay, I got a couple of Oreo cakes to make. They're going to love it. Mama, Mama, Kayla has info. Okay. All right. I will look at her, her video. I saw that she was on like the first time I'd seen her and on in a really long time. Yeah. I, I haven't made an Oreo cake ever, but I can't be that hard, but I want to make it with, with uh, whipped cream icing. I need to learn how to make whipped cream icing. Um, I don't really care for buttercream, but I do like a, a whipped cream. And uh, I think that would be really good. It wouldn't be so, Super sweet. It would be like almost semi-sweet. And I think everybody would like that. Something a little bit different. Um, but I always use that Hershey's um, chocolate cake recipe on the back of the can. Yeah, the cocoa can. It's a really good recipe. Um, even the frosting is really a good recipe. It's really good. Just a good cake recipe. But I will up the flavor and use coffee instead of water in the recipe and that will really help develop out that flavor and then i will do the uh the whipped cream icing and uh you know put the oreos and stuff on top you know because he's he's about to turn 10 he's not into the, like the character cakes anymore I, like last year we did flash for him that was a lot of work but i think this year he's like he's he's a little bit more mature he's you know i think he'll be okay with the idea of having an oreo cake Yeah, me too. All right, me too. I got to get going. All right, thanks, guys. I appreciate you. Um, make sure you hit the thumbs up on the way out. Um, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. You know, Rigor Maru. And um, I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you tomorrow morning at 8.30 in the morning, Central Standard Time. And I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Okay, bye. Ta-ta for now.